Hello there, and welcome to this session of uh, Elite uh, Talks. We are uh, talking about uh, digitalization in different uh, aspects, and today it will be all about design for security, privacy, and trust. Or do I say privacy in Britain? Um, privacy, I, I think, is better. Privacy is how you would say it in America. Yeah, right? yeah <laughs> well, I felt it's privacy. Yeah, yeah privacy is British. In Eng British English. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and the reason that's important is because we have Mark Doherty here. Mm. But we are in Halmstad at the moment. And you are here as? A professor in Information Technology at uh, Hosea Halmstad. Yeah. And... Besides you, you have Johan, mm. not a professor, not yet? Not yet. Uh, associate Senior Lecturer of Mathematics, I think it's, it's uh, the British uh, way of saying it, right? I mean, not uh, associate, Assistant Professor, I mean, would be more the... Yeah, okay. well, uh, you Maybe. can get into a big minefield with all these, uh, all these <laughs> different don't, 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 do that, right. so don't, don't go there. Don't go there. No. Don't go there. But just, the just, just be professor as soon as possible, and then all <laughs> I this goes away. I <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And stick, stick to privacy. That's, that's <laughs> the easy way of get, getting into this area. So, well, good to have you both here. And also, we have, uh, well, th all the way from Tresklöfs uh, or do we say Leget? Katrin. <laughs> Hello, Katrin. Like it? Yeah, it's nice. It's very nice to be here. I look forward to this uh, panel discussion. Yeah, and uh, this is, if you don't know her, this is Katrin Fuerbay. Uh, let's get it right. Technical advisor in connectivity at Volvo Group. Yes. Bam. And thanks for it. having me on this panel. Yeah, so just tell me, what, what does a technical advisor in connectivity at Volvo Group do a normal day? Oh my God, <laughs> I do a lot of different stuff, but uh, it's everything from reading proposal of legislation to uh, work on input to standardization and yeah, antennas, cables, communication systems. It's a diverse set of tasks that I have on my plate, to yeah, be honest. So. Well, thank you for, for joining in. And if I just say, if I say design for security, privacy and trust, what are your first thoughts on that topic, Catherine? Yeah, I mean, these topics are essential um, for the, um, I mean, for the automotive industry at large, I would say. Trust, uh, privacy for our customers and uh, security is, of course, we, need, we are designing things. Uh, we have security in mind always. It's security by design and um, yeah, and the safety, of course, we need to put out safe products on the market. So yeah, these are really uh, important uh, things for us. Yeah. And, and, and uh, you... but the, we have all the, we have all the data about the traffic and all about the society, but also we have, well, about the, well, the drivers, the people in, in the vehicles. So we're close to the, well, a, a private perspective so so from a privacy perspective mm. uh, this is sensitive data yeah yeah some of it some of it can be sensitive uh, you, you if, if you're talking about you even finding out who has been uh, where and, and when uh, that, that can be sensitive for a personal nature but a lot of this stuff is also sensitive from a business perspective if you're running a fleet of vehicles then your competitors would really like to know like uh, what your load factors are and uh, and, uh, and uh, what your efficiency of your uh, of your business is what prices you, you can be uh, charging at that at that rate and so on. so this is this is com data that's often very confidential for 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 business users as well as uh, as well as personal uh, people yeah um, i mean you know, a lorry driver might not mind so much about people knowing you've been there or there but, but from a business perspective, you know exactly uh, what loading factor uh, the vehicle is uh, is running at. Compare and compare that to your own figures. Maybe you can find out why this company is doing a little bit better than you are. So that stuff is very sensitive indeed. Yeah. How do you handle this uh, at Volvo? Yeah. I mean, so of course we have a lot of uh, privacy measures in place. I mean, we have legislation also in Europe, which actually drives the legislation throughout the world. Uh, for protecting especially the personal data. I think the personal data um, that uh, that you can trace and uh, uh, individual uh, vehicles is, is uh, you know, 
good protected through the general data protection regulation that we have in place that you know are um, and we also have an e-privacy uh, legislation that is coming up that will put up even more requirements on on when you're transferring data uh, from any any you know unit that is connected to the internet so of course the the privacy uh, is of paramount but also the business business critical data of course yeah. so yeah. uh, uh Johan, uh just before you you join in give us the well your your perspective on this what are you doing in a normal day because you're into into to traffic and and uh, mm. situation through um, uh, this, yeah, well, tell us. Right, so, so my background is that I'm a mathematician, right? But I, I sort of converged into some, some different areas here. And uh, uh, so, but, but here in this, I'm partly doing some, you know, analysis, trying to solve some mathematical problem that arises in this context, but also partly doing simulations and, you know, doing some other stuff, teaching, supervision, etc. But in this specific context, it's more about either doing simulations and doing thinking or doing analysis kind of hands-on when it comes to solving specific problems here to be honest i mean it's um and and, and how much of these questions about mm. integrity do you we will do you come close to i i i i'm mostly into safety i mean we talk about this privacy privacy security and then we have the safety which for me it's more about you know avoiding collisions i mean physical collisions between objects yeah. <laughs> so that's that's a different part of it but i do think there's something interesting here because uh, wh what i think is if you don't have enough data because of privacy or privacy reasons uh, you may not have a safe enough system so for safety you want as much data as possible from all types of different car manufacturers or you want openness right so so you say yeah. uh, gdpr could be a problem for getting in, in uh, in, not, in front of the not development. really not really but w what i'm saying is that there, there is um there there, are, there may be like a trade-off in some sense between I, I i this is something i think about right now no. when when you guys talk about you know safety versus you know i see it and these kind of things so in, of data. Yeah. do you agree do you see is there a, a, a problem here Yes, there is a problem because we, I mean, we want to increase uh, road traffic safety. I mean, like you one just mentioned here, uh, where we would like to uh, chain data between vehicles and between other road traffic participants. And then GDPR is an obstacle for us. Um, of course, uh, we are have been working for many years um, introducing uh, wireless communication directly between vehicles, but GDPR is is one obstacle and um, that's the greater societal interest uh, compared to the the privacy of the the person so i think uh, you one points to one thing that is very crucial and it's not fully clear in the brussels area and, and regulation from the commission how to handle this kind of uh, yeah i would say corner cases where you want to share maybe personal data in order to increase the road traffic safety to avoid mm. uh, to avoid a, a accident or incident. So yes, here is um, um, these kind of legislations like GDPR, which is across or horizontal across many industries. It's difficult. They don't want to make a special legislation for, you know, road traffic safety or for, you know, transfer of uh, bank details. So that, that's a problem we have. Since we have so many manufacturers, so many, many different cars around there, should we, do we need more kind of standardization when it comes to regulations, legislations and, and stuff like that for, for being able to get into the, the autonomous vehicle world? world? Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> we are, I mean, so the Commission in Europe and also all over the world are working on legislation that we could sort of put out autonomous vehicles, uh, it is it is quite tricky moving away from having a driver that is responsible uh, for for driving the vehicle and uh, moving and having an autonomous vehicle where you could maybe have passenger passengers, but no one is responsible for the actual driving. So we, we are working intensely together in the industry at large uh, to find suitable legislation for bringing uh, self-driving vehicles onto public roads. Yeah, so and will it will it will it be possible to have the left side driving in Britain? <laughs> <laughs> I 
Uh, you'll have yeah, to I mean, reverse. I think... <laughs> <laughs> that would be a first meeting, I believe. Um, so, so what do you think? Well, uh, what are you working on uh, at the moment uh, from your angle, um, Catherine? No, but so we are. I am part of a part of the Volvo Group uh, who are working called Volvo Autonomous Solutions, and and we are uh, bringing autonomy to public roads and confined areas. Um, so we are <clears throat> working on several very interesting initiatives, um, and uh, one is the uh, a pilot in uh, the Switzerland where we will uh, launch. Um, yellow machines that are autonomous, electrified and connected uh, for a customer who wants to drive to decrease their CO2 emissions and the environmental impact. Um, so uh, there's a lot of work in the confined areas, I would say in general, because it's an easier environment from an autonomous perspective when you want to bring autonomous vehicles because you can control the area. You could you could make sure that people are not entering where we have uh, the autonom autonomous operation compared to public roads where you need to find all different kind of corner cases to avoid uh, accidents. So, 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 so these are confined areas? Yes, like in a quarry, a mining site where you can actually, you know, have a high fence and that where you only allowed uh, okay or where you are not allowing people into certain parts of the of the mining site or it could be a harbor as well or yeah yeah so so and and uh, and uh, because it it, it, would, it must be trickier when it, when you blend it with the normal traffic i believe yes because then you also have because on a confined area or in a mine you could have you know all vehicles could be autonomous in one part of the mine and they are working together to solve a solve something in them in the mine um, but on the public road you i mean we cannot shift you know from we have the manually driven vehicles and from one day to the other we only have autonomous vehicles then it would be an easier case right i mean we need to hmm. the autonomous vehicle need to be present together with in a mixed traffic scenario and of course the the highway scenario is an less challenged environment uh, compared to, for example, an urban environment in a city where you have so many other actors also involved. Yeah. This so, is close to your, yeah. your, your research, I believe. Yes, I, I would say that uh, I know a subset of what Katrine knows because she's a co-author of most of my papers. So, so this, <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, no. <laughs> Um, no, but 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 essentially, yeah, uh, we, we have been working together and and uh, complementing each other. I think. Uh, I, I, I mean, I like I said, I, I look m a lot on the, the safety aspects and these kind of things. And you know, um, Katrin has a more, you know, broader perspective. I would say. Yeah. yeah. When, when it comes mm. to all these uh, uh, autonomous vehicles, do do we have some kind of anything about privacy there? Uh, do they need to be? Uh, anonymous, oh, my autonomous, anonymous vehicle, or do we always gather data? It, well, might, it might be a silly question, I don't know, but I'm just Well, well it depends, because if, if, we move, if we move to mobility on demand, then uh, th those vehicles are not owned by any particular person. They're like taxis, and they're, they're, then anybody can be uh, using them. Yes. Uh, uh, so, so then you've got a really quite complicated uh, uh, privacy situation because it, it's, it's not it's not data that's restricted to just like it's not data in, in the ownership of the uh, uh, of the of the owner of the vehicle in the way that if you if you if you own your own private vehicle then the data that it has in there is kind of like under your control yeah uh, uh, but there will be uh, some information about me just by using the car yeah yeah i mean if you because you've got to pay for it presumably so there's going to be some kind of payment information i mean every every everything we do in modern society leaves this like electronic uh, paper trail of uh, of things going you, uh, 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 you if, if we knew where to look everybody would be able to see exactly where you had gone this morning and then you filled up the car there and then you drove here and uh, and all those kind of things so so and and, and actually in uh, i mean sweden is quite uh, liberal in this context mm -hmm. i mean if you go to so if you go to some like China, then you have face recognition everywhere. They can track everybody around and, and do. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, so no. But I mean, but I, but I think that there are there are other things which you maybe not specific, I mean, you know, less privacy issues, but more more concerned with like. Uh, uh, 
you, you, not, not, not necessarily safety, but you, if, if, if vehicles are going to use large amounts of communication to like, uh, like broker uh, against semi collisions and uh, like communicate to traffic lights and things, then you can imagine that somebody sometimes would think this would be a fun wheeze to like disrupt all this communication and, uh, and, and cause a huge uh, traffic jam. Yeah, and I mean, we, you know, I mean, this is in in in, uh, in computing, uh, you know, because of denial of service attack. You know, so you can I, I can certainly imagine denial of service attacks uh, happening if you uh, uh, if you win this, because if if you train all the vehicles like so they like they they communicate together. Right. Okay. Then we can get greater throughput, get greater efficiency of the roads. We put the vehicles closer together, and it's and it's still safe. And that's fine until somebody uh, like uh, disrupts it. At which point you're going to get an almighty traffic jam, and it's going to be really difficult to. Uh, so, so, making the system robust against uh, those kinds of attacks is is is, is quite important and, and and quite challenging actually. Uh, 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 from a Volvo perspective, how do you work on those issues? No, but just like he said that, uh, I mean, you need to create a system that is robust mm -hmm. and um, you cannot just uh, maybe trust to have one source uh, for data when you're deciding on certain um, uh, on certain maneuvers or whatever. Um, it depends on, we have several techno wireless technologies out there that can help the autonomous mm -hmm. vehicle. And um, if you, the denial of service attacks are usually targeted towards the internet, the internet connectivity. More and more vehicles are connected to the internet through a, through sort of you install, um, yeah, a 4G modem uh, like a mobile phone, but it's adapted for the automotive industry, and um, so it is connected to the internet in essence. So of course, um, you need to create a system. You need to yeah be robust. It's a design matter. Mm -hmm. When it comes to robust systems, I'm thinking of the the uh, the uh, the uh, the world of militia, military world. Are, are they more robust? Those systems? Uh, can can we uh, take ideas from 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 that that area? Mm, well, we can, but uh, you have to remember that the, the, the military hardware has a completely different price ticket to uh, civilian hardware. So, yeah, you can make stuff really, really robust, but the, but then it's because like it completely beyond the. Much. I mean, it will cost too much. I mean, like, yeah, yeah. But that's the reason and, we don't and, have it. Yeah, I mean, you know, I mean, an F thirty five costs like a hundred million dollars just for one. Uh, uh, and uh, okay, it's an aeroplane, so it's a little bit more expensive to build it. But but the, uh, uh, you know, an awful lot of that cost is just in the electronics uh, uh, and making it robust, making it uh, completely secure, you know, with, you know, uh, so secure against uh, electronic warfare and that kind of okay. thing. Uh, and and, that, and that, that, that is expensive. That, that, that. But, of course, but they must be in the front of, of yeah, yeah, developing. They are. Yeah. And of course, one of the reasons why it's expensive is that we don't, we don't build very many JAR Screeper or, uh, or F-35s. You know, the, the production run is very small. Uh, whereas the production run for for vehicles is, is, is that run on the road is much bigger, so yeah, there is, there is there is scope to trickle down some of those technologies uh, to uh, for, for for wider mass production, uh, but you've got some major political questions about doing that because like you like military stuff is all secret and government doesn't want it to be, so it's it's kind of hard to like trickle down at least the current generation of uh, of military hardware because that, that's. That's not something that the governments want out in the open. Yeah, no, no. I mean, I think also there's uh, a lot of regulations when it comes to this. I mean, this kind of export control, mm -hmm. war material, etc. Uh, you don't need to necessarily uh, uh, be able to shoot with it to, to make it classified as war material. And then there are special regulations mm -hmm. if some components are part of a system that in terms, like for a submarine or something, like a small component might be war material anyway. So, so. Uh, that that's there we can talk about regulations and stuff so so but but um no no i mean so 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 that that's another complication that's, yeah. yeah let's go back to personal integrity because i i'm thinking uh, uh, we talk about the the personal perspective we've been talking about it here and and but then also i can well we can see that we're we're gathering information about us all, all the time 
in every, every platform asking questions and, and uh, uh, collecting data about us. So I'm, I'm just thinking, what are, are we too picky about this? Uh, is, it, is it worth protecting this, this uh, integrity that much? Because, well, we will, it would be easier if we... Is that an old school thinking or is this the, 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 the most important thing in the world? What do you say, Katrin? I think it is extremely important uh, that, uh, I mean, the privacy and integrity uh, of your personal data. And I think uh, um, GDPR, who was a major, um, uh, it, it was a major legislation. It changed a lot in Europe. Um, uh, we, uh, all the companies in Europe needed to do a lot of work, but it was worth it. But I isn't, isn't you, it? Is yeah. it just a, a, the, the, the old way of thinking, oh, it's, it's um, my data, it's my life. No, no it's, you, you're inherited all the DNA and, and don't, be, don't think you're so special. It would be easy if we all come along and join in with our data. Don't be so picky. It, it, it's, 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 now I'm a bit naive, I realize, but uh, couldn't it be that way? No, I mean, the data, we have, we have had several scandals around data. You could just look what happened with Facebook and, uh, and the, um, uh, the US election when Trump was elected and so forth. There are so many uh, scandals around how to use data and how to manipulate people's behavior. And um, I think it is extremely important to really, uh, yeah, preserve privacy and keep integrity because that's a weapon today. That's a weapon today in the digital world. So yes, yep. I think it's extremely important. We should not be naive. Uh, uh, do you agree? Yeah, yeah I, th I, th I think it's very important because I think uh, uh, people are not going to trust the uh, the suppliers of uh, of. of yeah, whatever services, vehicles, they're not going to. It was a question of trust with the with the, with the individual users, uh, and like the, the level of trust between users and individuals and big government, big business, uh, big. I mean, you look at the number of people that uh, refuse to get vaccinated because they don't trust big pharma. Okay, uh, and. I think it would be fatal for the for the for the vehicle industry or any other industry, for that matter, to end up in the same situation. You know, we we don't trust you know, b b big 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 transport uh, because they're stealing all our data and doing all this. So I think it's vital to have that uh, that, that, that that trust between the yeah. between the companies and the uh, and, and and the individual people. Yeah. And 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 legislations like like GDPR, it will it will pay off. Even more later. Yeah, I think so. Uh, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, I'm thinking about the vulnerability, vulnerability, uh, and we're talking about uh, hackers. Uh, how uh, how do you work with uh, on those issues uh, involve a group when it comes to to uh, enemies who want to, to get into your system and, and hack it? Um, what's your thoughts about that, Catherine? Yeah, it's the same here. I mean, cybersecurity, cybersecurity is essential. We have a new legislation coming up for the, uh, the uh, ordinary vehicles that we have on the streets today, um, the ones that we are driving ourselves, uh, a new legislation on cybersecurity, exactly addressing these aspects uh, with cybersecurity threats towards the vehicle, towards the backend system that the vehicle is connected to. This is really serious and, and but cybersecurity is a moving target. I mean, we need to be ahead of the hackers. Yeah. Um, so it's it's a matter, yeah, it's a cat and mice game. Of course, we are, yeah, it's the core, as I yeah. said earlier. And, 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 by design. and, and how, uh, how secure are the, the, the general infrastructure in Sweden, if you compare to other countries? Are we on a high level or, or are we a bit behind? Mark, uh, well, that's uh, that, that's. Uh, I mean, I would say, in, in many respects, Sweden is quite advanced because uh, we, we introduced. I mean, things. I mean, things like the bank ID system for general, uh, like uh, IC, IC security for for for, for personal uh, use, like broke through a lot earlier than uh, in a lot of other countries. I mean, you, it, there are plenty of countries where uh, you, you still don't have this digitalization of all these government functions and banks and everything else. So, I mean, not only was that, was that useful in terms of uh, uh, like 
reducing risks of data uh, 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 going out in many different countries. I think most importantly of all, it, uh, when we had this kind of project to roll this out, it educated everybody in the country about how important this was. It, you, the, the general people, the politicians, the, the, uh, the people in charge of all the different government agencies. That's an underbond. Yeah, 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 absolutely, because it, once, 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 once everybody once companies, government, the people, you, uh, politicians, once everybody is, is, agrees that this is important, then it tends to mean that stuff gets done. Mm. Uh, so I would say that, generally speaking, the, 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 sort of the level of infrastructure and the... And, and the and, and, uh, uh, yeah. I mean, I, I you can't really re reduce it down to, to an infrastructure. Uh, uh, as Katrin said, it's like a process. It's carrying on all the time. It's not. It's not like you can say, right, that's job done. We've done our. Uh, we've done our IT security, it's, it, and it's secure. It doesn't work like that. Right. You, it, it's a continual process. Uh, but, can, I, can, but can we too be too dependent on technology, uh, or do it, would it be great to have? Oh, become more low tech in some areas, just being uh, humble and or being well not have the all the um, we say eggs and what are you the, uh, all the eggs in one basket yeah, yeah. Uh, or, or is that uh, could it be could we rely too much I mean, this is a very, a very philosophical yeah, question. Definitely. And I, I definitely. I want to uh, end with a philosophical exactly. Question. Uh, this is an end, end, uh, end point here, and uh, no, um, I don't personally think so, no? but but other people might think so. Uh, Kathleen, uh, uh, do we uh, are we de too dependent on technology? Do you think? Both yes and no, but um, no, I, I don't think so. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, we are sensitive. We are sensitive when we have, you know, electric, electrical outage, uh, for example, we had it here um, during the weekend. So yes, I mean, of course, everything is depending on that you, you can charge it and you can have electricity. And, but I don't believe that. I think the technology serves the human pretty well. A lot of good things have come out of technology. So. No, I don't okay. think that we are too dependent. Okay, last question. Uh, you, you uh, sometimes have to give the uh, opportunity to wish for something. Uh, and when it comes to this area, uh, and you know, design for security, privacy, and trust, you can wish for one, one, one thing each. Katrin, what do you wish for? Ah, <laughs> that was a, that was a really tricky one. No, I, I wish for that. Um, no, what should I wish for? <laughs> no, but we in Europe that we in Europe will be world leading on privacy and and security uh, for the for the citizens in the European Union. I think yep. that's a very important topic for okay. all of us. That's a good wish. Uh, you want? I wish for the exactly the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> Boring, but it's okay. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah. And uh, of course, you do the same. Well, no, no, I mean, like uh, I, I'm going to say, uh, say the, the thing that I raised up earlier about. Uh, 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 proper support for uh, accident investigation. I think this is so important for uh, like rolling out uh, uh, autonomous vehicles and stuff that, 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 that uh, it, 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 you, uh, there's, that things are going to go wrong. We've got to accept that things go wrong. We've got to, we've got to have a way of, uh, of investigating that openly uh, to, to, to be able to go on. Uh, and then when it comes to uh, the uh, like too much uh, reliance on uh, security, uh, I mean, on, on electronic, so I think the key thing that I would like to have there is free coffee on the train when the electronic payment system doesn't work and nobody can buy any coffee because nobody has any money with them anymore. So that, okay. that would be... We end on the, 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 the search for free coffee. <laughs> That's good. Thank you so much for being here. Catherine, high five. Thank you. High so, five. Thank you so much for being here and uh, for all your uh, uh, good uh, lines and thoughts about this uh, topic. And thanks to both uh, of you here in the studio. And thanks to all of you uh, joining in uh, in front of your computers. I hope you enjoyed.